Uh, good morning. This is Apostle David Juma, the Senior Minister of Life Church International here in Nairobi, Kenya, coming to you in this program, Command Your Morning. Glory to God. We're going to just receive such a beautiful moment together. I'm speaking on the topic, the principle of friendship. I tell you, we are living in days right now when we need to ask very pertinent questions. Am I a friend of God? And what would that mean? Who are my friends in terms of our socialization and what benefit would there be uh, if I'm walking through it with friends that are genuine? And not only that, indeed, we're going to look into the word of God to address those matters and you will appreciate the principle of friendship because some of the problems we face could actually be sorted out through the system and the principle of friendship that is established and can be established. Glory to God. Listen, I want to read a scripture in the book of Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 17. Just one scripture and then I lay a foundation over this matter today. The Bible says in Proverbs 17, 17, it says, A friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Wow, a friend loves at all times. There's that aspect of constancy at all times, praise God. Now, then there's this other scripture in the New Testament. You know, when we were younger, we learned to do the uh, two verses, you know, first reading and second reading. John 15 and verse 13, the Bible says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. Wow. So the whole aspect of friendship will require that somebody to have love to such a great extent he can lay down his life even for his friends. Glory to God. Listen, true friendship is costly and it's, not, it's also not easy to maintain a friendship. But we'll look at those things and see the blessing, the benefit, and this principle of friendship. Praise God. And my sharing is geared to this fact and matter that we need to be friends of God. We need to be friends with God. That's the highest level of friendship that I want to encourage this morning. Glory to God. The friendship with God. Hallelujah. Now, here the Bible says that a friend loves at all times. And that greater love than this, you know, there is no greater love than this, that a man will lay down his life for his friends. What is that referring to? It's referring to Jesus Christ and how he died on the cross and how he came and was buried on the third day. He rose from the dead. He was doing that because he wanted to raise a generation of people who will be his friends indeed, who will be friends of God. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me. When we trace in the word of God, we will look at three men that operated as friends of God and how that principle of friendship with God brought, you know, brought a great blessing, produced great benefits in Jesus' name. Now, this man is Abraham, and then we'll look at Moses, and then we'll look at Jesus Christ. This morning, let's take this journey as we meditate on the word of God. And this morning will be a great, beautiful morning for you and I in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. In fact, uh, when we look at Abraham, let's read the three scriptures concerning Abraham and drive uh, some benefits and blessings from this as we establish the principle of friendship. Uh, one is in James chapter 2. Uh, James the apostle wrote in James chapter 2 and verse 23, and this is what he said, that all the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. You see, Abraham walked with God and his relationship with God was so deep that he became a friend of God. How do I know that? Look, James, who was a disciple of Jesus Christ, 
ends up quoting Abraham and referring to that story. That means Abraham's journey and walk with God was so major that thousands of years later, the apostles are talking about the friendship of Abraham and God. I pray that our friendship with God and our relationship with him will be talked about by our families, by our children, by our grandchildren, and the next generation, even in the years to come, praise God. Because this life will, you know, be amazing if we can embrace the principle of friendship, praise God. Let me show you another scripture, still on this journey of Abraham, as an example of somebody who cultivated his friendship with God. In Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 5, 6, and 7, Jehoshaphat was the leader of Judah, and they are praying, and there were trouble, there were attacks, and nations and reason against Judah, and they needed help. This is what the Bible says in verse 5. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there no power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? I like the questions that Jehoshaphat is asking in prayer. Verse 7, are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? Wow, what major questions. But right in there, he sneaks in this powerful statement concerning that this land that you gave to Israel is the land you promised to the descendants of Abraham. And then he qualifies Abraham's connection and he says, you are friend, praise God. Wow, God can have friends. And I want you and I to be friends of God, hallelujah. And because Abraham became a friend of God, we will quickly see the things that Abraham and God did together and their impact on the earth, the glory to God. In fact, prophet Isaiah, as he prophesied and he spoke, to Israel, he referred to Abraham as a friend. Look at how this friendship of Abraham and God kept being referred to by different men in the scriptures. Isaiah 41 and verse 8. This is what the Bible says. But you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants of Abraham, my friend. Wow. God is happy and proud to talk about his friend, Abraham, praise God. Now, because of that friendship between Abraham and God, let's see what the Bible would teach us from this principle and relationship. The Bible says, maybe five things very quickly. Number one, Abraham became a friend of God through obedience. Mm. Remember when he was offering his son Isaac, he obeyed what God said. God had said to him in Genesis 22, come to one of the mountains, excuse me, <coughs> one of the mountains <coughs> of Moriah and sacrifice your only son. And the Bible says Abraham arose in the morning and went to the mountain with his son and with the wood and the fire and laid his son on the altar. But before he could knife him, the voice spoke from heaven and God showed him a lamb, I mean, that he had provided. Praise God. And Abraham's obedience caused God to say, now I know. In fact, in Genesis 22, he says, now I know. Praise God. Look, our obedience to God, when he asks us to do anything and we obey, we are showing and demonstrating that we honor him, respect him, and indeed, we honor the principle of friendship with God. Secondly, Abraham's uh, friendship came about through his generosity because he was generous. I mean, he is giving his only begotten son. It was showing how God himself is also friendly and is giving or is going to give his son, Jesus Christ, the only son and give him to humanity through his generosity. Listen, if you are a friend of anybody, you will demonstrate that through your obedience 
and being able to hold to the words you agree together and secondly your generosity without the giving and taking give and take that friendship may not go very far from abraham we learn his faith and his works james says that abraham was accounted you know righteous because of his act of obedience so his faith and works look because we are friends of god we must demonstrate faith in him that means trust in God you see even in normal friendships there has to be trust between two people glory to God and look at the works that Abraham demonstrated to show his friendship and so if you are friends with somebody you will do certain things this is demonstrated also through the principle of love because you love therefore you give praise God and so friendship with God as we learning concerning Abraham we see number three right here that is faith towards God is total trust and his works demonstrated that he benefited and indeed respected that principle of friendship and then because of that number four he walked with God they walked together praise God people are friends they walk together and I pray today you will not be lonely as you arise and shine and face a new day you will consider uh, Lord I not only want to walk with the people here on earth but I want to know that I can walk with you in fact in Genesis 17 God told Abraham walk before me uprightly and be blameless praise God and uh, this is what is required of us to walk with God and as we're walking with God that's how our friendship is enhanced and built glory to God and fifthly concerning Abraham if you read Genesis 18 you find a very major story and I pray that you can have time in your Bible study in your reading to read Genesis 18 and see how God was prepared to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and indeed he destroyed it but as the angels were going to ask Sodom this is something the the Bible says they said will I hide to Abraham the things I intend to do knowing that he will command his children and his descendants and his generations after him praise God you know God was about to destroy a whole city and guess what in my own words he couldn't do that without first telling his friend Abraham and as soon as Abraham got to know about that matter Oh, he began to intercede. He began to pray. He began to say, look, God, you can't just destroy Sodom like that. You know, if there are 50 people there, will you still destroy it? Listen, even this matter of COVID-19 is going to be sorted out through the principle of friendship. We need friends of God to sit with God and inquire and ask, Lord, will you destroy a nation like Kenya? Will you destroy Africa? Will you destroy Europe and America nation? Will you destroy the nations of the earth? You know, will you destroy? If you find a certain number of righteous people there, will you still destroy it? And guess what? Abraham negotiated with God, his father, praise God, from 50 people to 45 to 30 to 20, all the way to 10. If you find 10 people, will you still destroy the city? And God said, I will not for the sake of the 10. Glory to God. And then God was able to ask Abraham, I mean to ask, uh, yeah, Abraham, and, and to ask Lot actually and his family to get out of the place. And indeed, though his wife did not obey, she lost it, but the rest of the family was saved. Glory to Jesus. This principle of friendship is so major, my friend, that if we can walk with God and walk with each other, praise God we can sort out a lot of issues today and you see the enemy likes putting people and make them so lonely and make them appear like nobody cares about them but I want you to know somebody cares God cares and he would want to be your friend just like he would want to be my friend so those are lessons from Abraham secondly let's look at lessons from Moses who was a friend of God and I'm just gonna read one scripture concerning this matter of the relationship between God and Moses because of our time Exodus that the three and verse 11 the Bible says so the Lord spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend and he would return to the camp but his servant Joshua the son of Nun a young man did not depart from the tabernacle now listen here is a scenario Moses would often go before God remember when he received the Ten Commandments he went for 40 days and he would stay in the mountains with God the Bible says actually eating they ate and drank with God how about eating and drinking with God that's amazing and then Joshua will be left in the tabernacle will be left in the meeting he'll be left you know down the mountain down the valley but this amazing thing what the Bible says concerning the relationship between God and Moses that God spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend wow 
What a relationship. In fact, if you read the scriptures, you discover other prophets. God speaks to them through dreams. He speaks to them through visions. He speaks to them through other, you know, images and symbols. But to Moses, wow, he speaks with him face to face. And I pray, my dear friend, this morning, you can arise and shine and discover, hey, I can have a very deep relationship and friendship with God so that whatever he wants to do, he can be able to release it to me. I pray that we come to a moment where everything and anything happening on the earth, God will show us before. God will share with us before. And then when we also are under pressure and we have issues down here, we can also share them with God because he is our friend. Praise the name of Jesus. And this morning I want you to consider when you pray and when we pray and come before him in prayer, in worship, adoration and thanksgiving, one of the dimensions we should never forget is that we are coming to pray even to a friend. Praise the name of Jesus. You know in Luke chapter 18, I'm just going ahead of myself, we have the Bible saying in verse 1 that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Luke 18 and verse 1. And then Jesus went ahead and gave a story. He said there was a city, a judge who was not righteous and there was a widow in that city. Guess what? And this widow kept coming. Judge, please avenge me or my enemies. He wouldn't care. Uh, he would say, well, I don't fear man. I don't regard man. Forget it. But she kept coming. Then the judge said, oh, this woman weary me, so lest by her continual coming she weary me, I will avenge her. And then he said, wow, even God avenges his own elect to cry to him day and night. And then after Jesus finished that story, he says, uh, he brings out the matter of ask and shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened to you. And then he raises the matter and says, there was this man who had a friend come to him at midnight. Glory to God. And asked him for bread. I said, look, I have some friends who have come to me. So he goes to the neighbor who is a friend and says, give me bread. And you know, that man, though he would say, don't disturb me, I'm asleep. But look, because of his friendship and his connection, he would arise and give him as much as he would have wanted. Look at how friendship with God or friendship with man is such a powerful principle that when you are in need, then somebody will arise and share with you and give you all you need. I want you to know God is not an enemy. God is not away from us. God is Emmanuel, always available. He is here with us. Don't listen to the voice of the devil that tells you you are alone, you are burdened. Nobody hears you. God doesn't hear you. And God doesn't care. There's a voice from hell. I want you to know God hears. God is a good God. God is a friend. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Praise the name of Jesus. And as you are hearing this word this morning, I pray for you that indeed you can taste and see that God is good and he wants to have a relationship and a friendship with you in Jesus mighty name hallelujah that's an amazing thing that God spoke with Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend no wonder Amos said that God will not do anything on the earth before he reveals it to his servants the prophets praise the name of Jesus oh I want us to be a prophetic generation I want us to be a people who love God I want us to be a people who hear from God I want us to be a people who tunes into the spirit and can design the heart of God and the mind of God. It's beautiful to be among a people and you know what God thinks. You know what God wants to say and what he has said. Praise God. Because the principle of friendship with God especially is major. Hallelujah. You know, there are people who have no idea what's going on in heaven. They have no idea what angels are doing. They have no idea what's going on on the earth. Oh, I tell you in these times of COVID-19, the conspiracy theories, the guesswork and all manner of strange news and fake news because people are looking for the truth so much confusion but let me tell you something it can be sorted through the principle of friendship those who are friends with God keep hearing the mind of God the heart of God praise God I know there are four voices that are always competing with us and the voice is a voice from the world the world is busy speaking then the voice from self inside of you there are voices that are speaking and then the voice of the devil the devil is busy speaking and wanting to tell us stuff above all then there is a voice of God oh I want the voice of God to be the prevalent loudest clearest voice in your life and in my life hallelujah and that will be and shall be if we develop and cultivate this principle of friendship spending time together in Jesus mighty name now I have shown you about the benefits and blessings 
from, from the principle of friendship through the life of Abraham and through the life of Moses. Let me share the third one, the life of Jesus Christ. Now, here Jesus walks with his disciples for three and a half years. Right in the middle of it, he tells them something powerful in John chapter 15, verse 14, 15, and 16. We're going to read it. The Bible says, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I've heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you praise God. Jesus is telling the disciples, look, you can come and you should come. And now I declare you have come to a place of relating with the father, relating with me, not as servants, but as friends. I know we talk about uh, servants of God. How about friends of God? I think I would rather be a friend of God than just a servant of God, although I'm happy and glad to serve him. Uh, service is another doorway through which we come in into serving him and loving him. But I tell you, being a friend is another dimension altogether, praise God. May we just have this shift from just being servants to friends. And Jesus says, when you are a friend, then I can tell you some deeper secrets and mysteries from my father. When you are a servant, you have no idea what your master is doing. But when you are a friend of the master, I tell you what, you are part of the game plan, you are part of the inner circle, you are part of the system. <laughs> the principle of friendship will bring you into the system. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, even as we're talking about principle of friendship with God, look, there's also some benefits of being friends with men and friends with one another. You know, it's good to know that things that happen in the spirit are also replica of things that happen in the natural and vice versa many times. And so there's a need for uh, friendship with people. Don't just be an enemy of people. Always complaining and murmuring and accusing them and, you know, judging them and uh, being jealous of them and doing all manner of things. Relax, my friend. It's important to embrace the principle of friendship because this is a great doorway into much life and love and blessing in Jesus' mighty name. Let me share with you quickly the necessity and the purpose of friendship with men. You know, being friends with other people is important. Number one, there is love uh, for one another. You find somebody you can love, glory to God. Number two, not only, okay, not only that you love, but also you can receive love. Number two, sacrifice for one another, glory to God. If you have a friend, you can sacrifice, glory to God. If you don't sacrifice, you begin to lose that friendship. Number three, there's a spiritual bond for doing exploits together. When you're friends, you're buddies. In fact, Ecclesiastes 4 and verse 9 all the way to 12, it says two are better than one, glory to God. They can find, fight a battle together and win. They can keep warm. They have companionship, praise the name of Jesus. This is a spiritual bond. They can do exploits together. And look, they are able to fight battles together. They are able to fight battles together. Number five, they, they are able to protect each other. They need to protect. You need somebody to protect you and you need somebody you can protect and be able to be faithful. You find somebody, number six, who can bring encouragement, praise God. Oh, many people need encouragement in this season and it is through the circle of friends and friendship that you can find encouragement. You also need somebody who can keep confidence, somebody who can share with what is going on and will not hear it on the radio you the following day somebody can keep confidence and of course friendship must be kept pure glory to god because if you mess up the principle of friendship with impurity and lying and gossiping and all this kind of stuff if it's not pure it will be lost wow now i just want to begin to wind down this and say friendship with god and friendship with man are important this principle but there are a couple of things that can be destroyers of friendship and for now I just mentioned two of them uh, it will be a blessing number one anger if you are an angry person you always get angry you will mess up friendship you mess up friendship with God and even friendship with men look Proverbs 22 verse 24 says something it says make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man 
do not go. Wow. Do not go with a man who is only furious and make no friendship with an angry man. You need to begin to ask yourself, what is this that makes me so angry? What is this that makes me so, you know, burst with anger and throw tantrums? Yeah, the Bible says, of course, you can be angry and sin not. <laughs> the caveat is you get angry, but not after six o'clock. Wow. And so anger is a destroyer to matters of friendship. And I pray that the grace of God be available for you and me in Jesus' mighty name. That we shall conquer this deep emotion of anger that may have developed out of traumas you went through. Things you never received. Abandonment or rough, you are handled roughly and you feel injustice and it's never been you know, done for you. Or probably you are defiled and all manner of things that may have been the doorway to anger. May the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit walk with you maturely step by step to bring healing to you in Jesus name. One of the greatest means statements of Jesus is to heal the brokenhearted and that brokenness that led you to anger may the Lord deal with it and heal you in Jesus name this morning glory to God these are destroyers of friendship and number two worldliness and pride if you're so worldly what does that mean in fact I'm just gonna read this as I close James chapter 4 this is the last scripture I read from verse 1 where do wars and fights come from from among you do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members you last that you do not have you murder and covet and cannot obtain you fight and war you do not have because you do not ask you ask and you do not receive because you ask a means that you may spend it on your pleasure under trust and under trust is the bible say do you not know that friendship with the world is an enmity with god Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. You cannot be led by worldly principles and maintain friendship with God in the same way. You cannot be a person who is not upright and really keep genuine friends. Glory to God. I pray this morning in Jesus' name. As we are commanding this morning that the principle of friendship is something you will hold on to dearly and personally in Jesus' name. And be committed to it, be faithful to it in Jesus' mighty name. And God will work with you. Men and women will work with you. Both of you and all of you will accomplish mighty and great things on earth even to the glory of God. Amen. Wow, time is not with us, but I'm going to pray right now. I'm going to ask God to bless you and to establish you in a very powerful way. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my viewer this morning. I pray that the grace of God and the principle of friendship be established. Even faith comes by hearing. And Father, by what we have heard, I pray that you establish it strongly in God's people, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, my Father, those that are struggling with anger, struggling with personal issues in the heart, may they know that Jesus is able to heal even the brokenhearted. And I pray, may Christ Jesus save you, heal you, forgive you, bring you to a place where you can be trusted and trustworthy. And I say to you in Jesus' name, God is looking down on you to lift you up from the place where you are emotionally. Glory to God, Father, for the things you are doing right now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in this morning. This is Command Your Morning. My name is Apostle David Juma coming from Life Church International in the city of Nairobi. We will see you next time in the presence of God. Have a great day. God bless you. Mm -hmm.